and good morning and welcome to Locked in Stitches. I hope you are having a wonderful morning. I'm just going to make sure that everything is coming through. Okay, so how's everybody doing today? As always, I am uh, yep, that is all working good. As always, I'm Julie Hall. I am here for another fantastic, great year of machine embroidery and sewing. So, um, for those who are new, and I know we've got a lot of new people watching us this year, welcome. Um, the classes are all free to watch, free to join in. We love it when you comment and say hello and ask questions as we go along. Um, so please do join in if you can. Um, and look, it's all about the fun and it's all about learning new things with your machine. If there is something that you are interested in learning, please do let me know. Um, because I start running out of ideas. Um, and I can see we've got uh, Denise Cassells with us, Dasanka's with us, Jackie Watkins is here. Thank you so much for joining us. So today we are going to do continuous quilting. And this is one of those ones that I'm going to do throughout the year each month, showing you a different technique and how you can get the most out of the quilting features in your machine. Um, so today we're going to start off with the basics, which is just how to do the all over. Um, and I can see we've got Carmen from Canada. Good morning. And Vicky from Missouri. Thank you for joining us. Um, so behind me is actually next month's project. This is the linking and locking design that I'm going to show you next week, or next month, sorry. Um, I'm just planning early at the moment. Um, and whilst it's quite a dense all over, don't think that everything has to be that dense. And I've gone, um, there are lots of different designs that you can choose to suit your own project. And I can see we've got Leanne Adams wait wait with us thank you for coming in um, so grab a coffee or a harder drink if you're um, in an evening time zone I really don't mind and let's get started so there's a couple of things that we've got to do we have to prepare our hoop we have to prepare our fabric and then we've got to actually do the stitching to get started come through and prepare our hoop and what you can see here is I've got the outside of my hoop. I've taken the inside out and put it aside. And what I'm using is magna pins. And these magna pins are phenomenal. Um, they will not hurt your machine, um, but they will hold your quilt really firmly for, um, for quilting. And I'm going to show you exactly how I attach them to my machine with a piece of Incredi tape. So the Incredi tape is that tape that sticks to itself, but not anything else. And the reason I use that is simply because it is easy. And it means I don't have to clean the hoop afterwards. So that is my hoop created um, and you can see for a five by seven hoop as I've got there I've used eight magnets the link for the magnets is in the description of the class and you can look at that at any point okay so that is my hoop and then you close it up and you want to make sure it's closed up really really tight and now we can come through and we can start looking at how we are going to prepare our fabric for quilting. So what I've got here is a piece of fabric and I've got my quilt basting gun. 
And I can see we've also got uh, Gail Stafford from Eagle Point. Thank you for joining us as well, Gail. Um, if you haven't seen a quilt basting gun before, fundamentally it is just the same as a tagging machine, but I very specifically use thin needles and stock the thinner needles, which you have to have the specialty gun for, Tr trust me, ask how I know this, and smaller tags so that it holds everything together. And what I've got is my quilt sandwich. So I've got my fabric, my wadding, and my backing. And I'm just gonna come through, hold that gun, hold the needle to the fabric, and pierce through. And what that makes is it holds the entire quilt firmly together. Now, if I am doing a larger quilt, I will sit there and I will pop under the roast rack. Um, you know that heavier um, grid rack for the oven? What you'll find is the needle will really easily sit under that and then you can just go through and you end up stabbing it like it's a, um, like it's a family member. Um, and we've got Wanda from Mississippi and Angela from San Diego as well. Thank you for coming in. Um, so very easy to use, very simple to do. The other tools that we're going to use is I've got my template here. And my template, because I use this for classes all around Australia, I've... Um, laminated my template if I was just doing this at home I wouldn't do that and then I've poked holes in that hoop marking area so that I've got the center of the design and I've got the top of the design so these are the parts that matter I've also got my fabric marking pen I like to use a chalk pen um, and this is just a waxed chalk just because I do not trust that um, other pens are going to come out in the wash. Okay, so what I've got is the side of my fabric here. Now we always want to work from left to right simply because at the moment the fabric is floppy and very easy to fold up and manipulate. As we add the quilting to it, it's going to become harder as those three layers join together and it's much better to have that fabric out the side of the machine than in the arm of the machine. And what we want to take into consideration is where we want to start our quilting. So I am going to come through, I've drawn a line across the top here just so that it's a straight line, it is um, perpendicular I think is the word I'm terrible at maths and words like that uh, or so it's at a 90 degree angle to the edge of my fabric here and I'm going to come through and this line here is going to make sure that all of our designs start at the same point so I'm going to come through and mark where the first stitch starts and then I want to mark the center of the design. And I'm going to do the same thing down the bottom here, but I only need to mark the center of the design. Then I'm going to use my ruler. Now, um, if you don't have the ability to print a template. Don't stress too much about that because you can simply hoop up a piece of calico or um, average fabric and you can stitch out the design and then mark these cross hoopings at it. And that will give you the template that you need. Okay, and we've got Caitlin from Ohio and she's just bought her machine. That's fantastic. What machine did you buy, Caitlin? Okay, so now I want to come over 
to my machine camera. Okay. And I turned the machine off, so that does not help. And, oh, the Topaz, they are nice machines. Okay. And while that's setting up, I just want to show you. So the thread that I've got is the Wonderfill thread. And I'll show you some different samples of this as we go through. I'm using the pinks version and it's got a couple of different pinks almost going to oranges. But they are so subtle as they go through. And we put our hoop on just like normal. So I've got my design on the screen, as you can see here, and this marking in the center shows where the foot currently is. As I press the plus button, you can see how that foot goes up. Oops, oops. And now that presser foot or the needle is where that first stitch is going to begin. And we've got Rhonda Burnett, thank you for coming in. I certainly am using the new machine. So this is the CM17 and it is one sexy ass piece of work. Um, now I've also got my magnet backs, which are what is going to hold the fabric in. So let's come through because we've got that line drawn now and this is all about repetition. So we're going to repeat, repeat, repeat to get the look that we want. First thing is we've got that marking there that we placed on where the first stitch starts. So now we're going to come through and put the needle down along that marking. Then I've placed a mark on my hoop where the center of the hoop is. And I've just done that with a, um, with a pencil. I'm going to place my finger on the line that we drew, which is that halfway mark, and then move, whoops. So that's my mark. Here's my finger and I want to match that up. Once I've got that, I just pop my magnets on and all I want to do is, um, so bottom magnets first and you feel around to make sure they're in the right spot. So you can feel the back of the magnet there. And I don't need to use one at the top simply because um, there's no fabric there at the present time. Once I've done that, I need to raise my needle. And if you want to um, not have any knots on the back, you need to hold your thread for the first couple of stitches. So I'm going to hold my thread. First couple of stitches are done. And... Now I've also got my thang because I've come really, really close to the edge just so that I can show you that that can be done. And we've got Lorraine Schreis here as well. Thank you for coming. Now you can see that stitched over that without a problem. My machine automatically cuts the thread to start. Um, look, I do, I do, Caitlin, for this type of project only. Now, 
once we've done the first design, the questions start coming. A, can I speed it up? Yeah, you can, not a problem. Do whatever you like. Um, second question is generally, um, I wanna use my biggest hoop. I've got a mammoth hoop. Once again, you can, I like to recommend to people that they really master the art on this smaller hoop. And the largest size I go up to is my sort of 200, 250 wide hoop. Okay, so we're coming to the part of the design that is gonna come over here and the issue that you will occasionally have is it lifting the fabric up and back and chewing up the fabric. Now, this is only gonna happen on that first row. And using something like a thang or a finger thang is how you get around it. Fantastic question. Do you recommend magnetic hoops? Look, I, I love being able to use a magnetic hoop for something like this. Um, I'll be honest, my Janome machine comes with a magnetic hoop um, and I love using it. It is a little bit larger. The reason I use this one, and now I'm just going to take those magnets off um, and I'm going to show you how I restart before I finish answering that um, so now we've got our design first design done and we need to match it up so again I'm going to come over to the screen and move that hoop up to being in the first stitch position then I'm going to move my fabric up and we are going to put the needle down where the last stitch ended and that is what creates the join from there I always just miss where that's going to go there finger right in that center there lining it up with the line underneath And then we go bottom magnets, top magnets, and sides. Needle up. Hold that thread. And start your stitching. Okay, so, um, yes, magnetic hoops. What I'm not a huge fan of, this is perfect for quilting, it's perfect for um, designs that are not dense. Depending on the magnetic hoop, and I mean, there are so many of them out there these days, um, they can be used for that. It's really just about the cost and how much you're gonna use them. I am always going to be a person who prefers hooping a project to using a magnetic hoop, using basting spray, basting, anything like that. Just because I think long term you get a much better finish. Okay, Elizabeth's asking, sorry if I miss, but do you want the quilting to go off the fabric intentionally? Look, I am deliberately putting it that little bit off because remember this is edge to edge. So this is like if you finished a quilt top, 
and you've sent it off to be um, to be quilted. We are going to cover um, throughout the year how you would do specific borders, how you would do all of that extra fiddly stuff which you wouldn't put off the fabric. And Caitlin, it is so easy. Nothing I do is difficult because I'm actually pretty lazy. Um, so yeah, nothing in my life is, um, is difficult. Okay, mine's not frozen, Rhonda. Um, so it might be your service, I'm hoping. And this is both zen and monotonous all at once. Okay, that's good. It's working for Lynette. So, anybody got any good Christmas stories? Any good, um, anything that they made that they're loving over Christmas? I've been doing a couple of things that I'm looking forward to being able to share with you. Okay. So again, we will take our magnets off and go to where the first stitch starts and whoop, needle down where the last stitch ended. So one of the things, I've got a um, girlfriend who has a um, sort of high-end full-time job. One of the things that she likes to do is she comes home of an afternoon she has everything sort of set up on a sunday afternoon and her you know when you get home and you just want that bit of peace and quiet to yourself some people go and have a bath you know whatever works for you the individual well my friend actually comes through and does um one row of a charity quilt And that means it takes her about half an hour, half an hour to three quarters of an hour, but that's her zen. And she does that every day and she gets about one single or cot size quilt done a week just by doing that charity quilt thing. Okay, so Jackie's saying, what would you recommend for making multicolored quilt top? Um, so you can see the line for placement in the hoop. Ah, fantastic question. Um, I use the chalk pencil, I don't use the friction pens, I don't use any of the heat aways or wash aways because I've had bad experiences with them. Um, that is a personal thing um, and the chalk pens come off in the wash. And Leanne's asking, if you're using the 550, would you still start the design from left to right? Absolutely. Um, and Marie Louise Poole Pegram's asking, do we start on the edge or do you start in the middle? I start on the edge for everything. Um, the next question that I generally get is, um, what size can you conveniently do this up to? Look, you can do up to a double bed. Personally, I'm a planner and I will plan, <coughs> excuse me, I will plan two single bed sizes and do like a king or a queen that way and then use a quilt as you go in between. Um, the trick is less about the size and more about the um, the weight of the quilt so it's all about making sure you've got the ability 
on your table or bench to support the weight that you are stitching. Uh, do you only bring up the bobbin thread on the first run? At no, you can see I'm holding that thread on all of them just so that I don't get the knot on the back. Um, but if you don't cut in between, that won't be an issue. And um, Leanne, I've got um, I've got a 550E sitting behind me as well as the CM17. So I do, and this is what I teach when I'm at shows. Um, I teach on the 550s. Okay. So we had a lovely Christmas. We took the girls down to Melbourne. We had to take, um, and God bless my husband, he's the most just beautiful man putting up with my family. I mean, we went down for his family, but we ended up taking my niece down because her mother um, and she had had a massive argument and she was trouble. <laughs> um, so God bless my family for putting up with that. My son stayed home for his first Christmas without him. Um, and um, and then we sort of came home pretty soon. But it was great. We had time walking um, and playing around Melbourne. Um, we stayed in the city and it was really quite, quite lovely. Um, and then Christmas Day with my mother-in-law who's in a nursing home and then lunch with other family down in Melbourne. And I can see we've got Michelle Reynolds there. Thank you for joining us, Michelle. Lynette Graham's asking, how many Magna pins in a pack? There are five in a pack. Um, so generally, and you can see there's the purchase option of two packs and you get, I think, $3 off. So two packs for $27. Now, I love multi-tonal colours for, um, for quilting just because it gives extra interest. And whilst I'm on this side, these are some of the beautiful um, colours that are in the Fabulux range. And we're now stocking these just because they're so gorgeous. And I haven't done the sample of this one yet. So you can find those on our website. other thing that I did over Christmas was I played a losing game of rock paper scissors with my sister actually that's untrue my sister has other commitments and she um, so my sister and I are um, the only children my father has left my brother and mother passed away three years ago next week and um, so we kind of share taking care of and doing stuff for my dad and um, my so my sister had him for Christmas and I took him and my daughters and three nieces on a cruise last year which we nicknamed Voyage of the Damned uh, because it was well dad decided because he and mum used to do cruising all the time that he wanted to do another cruise so in two weeks, I'm going to New Zealand. Okay, so now comes an interesting time. So the question everybody starts to ask is, 
particularly when I'm at a class, do I have to stitch this last bit? And what I tell them back is how would you feel if you went and got something quilted and the quilter told you that they weren't going to do the last inch or two because it was too difficult? So the answer is hell yes, you've got to quilt it. Now, there's not enough room for the fabric to have the magnets in there at that end but there's certainly enough room in all the rest and I'm going to eyeball that line down the center and I call this going off the reservation so what we are going to do is we're going to stitch until we get to the end of our fabric So yeah, New Zealand, I actually don't mind the idea of. I'm loving that none of the littlies are coming, so it's really just Dad and I. And I'm taking, of course, my computer with me. Uh, the finger, the gadget on my finger is called the finger fan. And it's really just the embodiment of the regular thing. I always do better with things that I can't sort of lose. Okay, Margaret Hems with us. Thank you so much for joining us, Margaret. And Fiona Dempsey's here as well. Doris Elder, Carolyn Hyde, Beva Turpin. Thank you so much for joining us. So one of the things I've had to do this month since I've been planning this um, with dad was a go and get my passport redone um, so I'm in there getting my passport sorted out um, you know doing the Australia Post thing and there was a little baby getting a passport in front of me and everyone's gooing and garring over that baby and oh it's so cute and I said to my husband if they don't give me the same oh my god you're so cute I am not going to be impressed well let me tell you I was not impressed nobody was doing that um, and the, the joy of it is my mother had family over in New Zealand so we're getting together on our day in Auckland with family The other news we had over Christmas is I've got another wedding to go to this year. I've got another niece um, who is going to be getting married probably at Easter. Okay. And over the months you'll see not everything turns out as nice and evenly as this one is doing. And I'll teach you. I know next month we've got some details of coming very far off the reservation. Actually, I shouldn't have pressed stop there. That was stupid. Okay. And we've got Melissa Bryden. How are you going? Caitlin, brother, got a brother-in-law in New Zealand. There you go. Next couple of years. Oh, if you're going in the next couple of days, we could have met up. Okay. So first row done. Let's come over. Come to my workbench. And you can see that's a template that I've got. And I haven't laminated that one because I just don't um, need to. If it's something that I'm only doing one or two of, and I mean, it fell apart and I just re-stuck it together. Okay. So, and I'm just turning this so that I'm getting the best possible view for you guys. So this is our top. We've got our line across there that we drew. And this is my template. So mistakes people generally make with their template is turning it around the wrong way. And just look at the number and which way the number one 
is drawn is the best way to do that. So what we are looking to do, first of all, how many of you have ever stitched something straight? And the answer should always be, whoops, oh, oh, sorry guys. Ah, oh, the sticky bits coming off. The answer should always be nobody. So we never quite trust that that line that we drew was perfect. Instead, what we are going to do is come through and I put this first line, this first stitch along this line and then we start looking at where we are going to join. So how much space do we want between our designs? This to me would be too much space. Having them sit on top of each other would be too little space. So there has to be something in between. And what I'm generally looking at is if I look at the distance between these elements in the quilt, it's about a quarter of an inch. So that's what I'm looking to give myself between the elements on this side. And then I'm going to mark the center line So I'm going to mark the center line along here. And then because odds are we're not straight, I'm going to come through and mark the center line at the bottom as well. And that is going to give us our average. So I've marked the center line there and there. And then I'm going to come through and draw that up. Okay, then we're ready to come back and start stitching again. And not that, that one. Okay, uh, let's see. Can you utilize any quilt designs? Um, any of the quilt designs that I've got out there are all continuous. Um, you would want to check to see, I know, and look, there are some great designers out there. Um, the, every designer has their own interpretation on how to do something. So watch the videos. Um, I know there's one designer out there who has their continuous quilting designs as part A and part B. Um, now I'm not generally, I hate to use the word bright enough, but I can't think of a different word, um, to remember which one I'm at and to load a different design. I like the idea that once I've loaded this, it's all done. Uh, so yes, Michelle, you're absolutely right. How do you recommend to baste if you don't have a basting gun? Okay, so you can use pins. What you want to do, though, is make sure that you're removing those pins out of that hooped section. But absolutely, you can use pins. Um, I'm against glue basting simply because I do not want to find out in 10, 15 years that the glue has eroded out the, um, the fabric. Ah, Jill, do not worry at all. Will this be live be saved? It certainly is and you can watch any of them. So you can go back and watch what we did last year, what we did the year before at your leisure. Can you sew over plastic tags? Absolutely, I've just done that. Um, in what we were doing there. And Caitlin's asking, did I just tape the, absolutely, I've used the um, Incredi tape, which is that tape that doesn't leave, it, lose, leave any residue. 
Um, the other th <coughs> thing that I recommend people is keeping an eye out for additional hoops for their machines. So if you have, for instance, the CM17, if I wanna do my hooping in, um, in this hoop, looking for an extra hoop and buying it, and then using that um, just for the quilting so that it's always set up. Because the, the only thing I don't like is if I wanna come and do a different type of, if I wanna use this hoop this afternoon, I'm gonna to need to take the magnets off and then put them onto, uh, again, for Thursday's class. And normally I say, get people to give, you know, get all the kids to bump in and get you a hoop for Christmas. Margaret, can you be on a design for use on a machine such as a Brother 6 thread? Most definitely, I used to have a 10 needle myself. Now, as you can see, I've come really close on here and that's just practice and working out where and how straight and everything that you are. Um, and um, what I don't want you to do is to change your alignment. Ah, now, I've just made the classic mistake that I say everybody is going to make at least once per project. And that is, I have not come through and pressed that plus button to go to where the first stitch starts. Now, I could tell you that I do that deliberately, but you and I would both know that that was a whole load of BS. So needle down the only thing i'm glad of is that i picked it up before i had um put all the magnets down and look if there is a mistake to be made odds are i have made it before um i am nowhere near perfect i have teenage children who would happily attest to that And what I love is just, I'm just going to come through, look at how beautiful that's already looking. And remember, if you were doing this on a quilt at home, you would be using like on a on an actual quilt that you were keeping you would be using your um a thread that color matched so any sort of you know minor matching up bits or anything like that that you see are not going to be seen as you do this yourself If that makes any sense whatsoever and because I don't have that side um, part that can flip up I don't need to use my finger thing now either how wide of an area is quilted um, so the designs are multi-sized um, I wouldn't go any, I, I would start out with this five by seven size, but you can do as large as you want. Okay. 
Jill saying she needs to be studying this from the start? Oh, definitely. And look, the 500 e is a sexy machine. Um, and with very, very few notable exceptions, there's no such thing as a bad machine. You can, and the reason I deliberately demonstrate this with a five by seven hoop is because anybody can do it. Any machine can do it. When I started my embroidery um, 22 years ago, I bought my first machine. And you know, I only had a five by seven hoop. And compared to what you know, other people at the time had, five by seven was huge. So do not think that you cannot do um, any technique or let anybody tell you, you know, oh, you don't have a blah, blah, blah. No, you got an embroidery machine. Say it loud, say it proud. Um, And Caitlin, you're exactly right. I mean, I multi-size everything. And generally speaking, when I'm making a project, I will make it in a larger size hoop as my sample piece to put on the wall at a show. But then, for and for instance, you know, the blocks of the month. Um, I'm doing them all in different sizes and I'm demoing it on the smaller hoop so that everybody sees that it can be done. Now, mind you, I love joining things together so that I can get the most out of my um, machine and hoops. And one of the things that I was studying over Christmas was the Janome Accu setup. Now, this is, excuse me, I've got the hiccups now. This is something that can be used for the Skyline S9, Janome 15, and the CM17. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and it's now available on the Android store. So it means I can take a photo and accurately place my designs wherever I want them to be within the hoop. So I'm loving that little feature. And Christine Oliver, first time viewer from New Zealand. Thank you for joining us. We're in New Zealand just because I'm learning where all the different parts of it are. You'd think as an Australian, now that's a bit of an oopsie on my side. I haven't got my stitching perfect. But once again, this is one of those things that I do want to show you because I want you to see that I stuff up and that it still looks fine. And remember, in a perfect world, you would not be doing this with such drastic color differences. needle down always start with the bottom and what you can see here as well is I'm pressing the fabric into the bottom of the frame because we still want that fabric to be sitting very very flat needle up <laughs> 
So Eduardo, the lovely husband, went back to work yesterday. But he's taking next week off to celebrate, for, you know, so that he's at home on our wedding anniversary. I'm thinking if he wants to celebrate that, he should go to work. Oh, enough of this family time stuff, for heaven's sakes. Ah, okay. So the one thing that this machine does is when your bobbin is out, it is out. You know that whole when she was good, she was very, very good. You do not have an option. On the upside is just how little bobbin is left when it says it's out. So that is how much is left. Now I know it sounds like one of the dumbest things, but I am going to put, even though there's only a medium amount on there, And all I've done is I've just pulled that thread backwards then through the, um, just to line everything back up. So you can absolutely do that with those hoops. It is not a problem. Absolutely, Caitlin. It's it's um, you can change the settings on a lot of machines for how much they will let go. Um, but it is one of the new features that they spruik on the CM17. Um, the fact that it only leaves such a tiny bit of bobbin. Okay, Carmen, sorry if Mr. Anne's is still confused about the bobbin thread. If you turn off the thread cutter, will the bobbin thread have a long attached thread between where you left off? Yes, it will. Um, you can go in and trim those later if you wish, um, but you will end up with those threads on the back, absolutely. So it's a case of which way you particularly want to do it. And I'll show you the back after we've done this row because I've only got one more design finished on this row. And then I'll show you the back of my project. Okay, so again, we are at the end. And I've got my needle down. And I just want to make sure that fabric's not moving as I go from side to side. And then hook the back in. What I, one of the things I'm loving about this thread is I keep on thinking that there's something wrong when it gets to this paler colour here. Um, 
and it's it's just realizing that it's not anything that's wrong with the um, with the thread or the fabric or the tension. It really is just that it's got those different colors in there, and it's it just adds to that all over texture. there really is something very soothing about the sound of the machine as it as it goes through and it really does take you to that zen place Okay, so let's come and look and see what the back of our design looks like. And what you can see, so this is the back. And for instance, right here is where we've started. So that's my little trim off there and my little sit under. Now, it does have its own locking stitch um, as part of the design, so that's automatically going to be there. There is going to be that little knot. The other thing is if you've got your um, cutter turned off, there'll be a loop of bobbin thread on the back, and what you're gonna to want to do there is then just go through and trim those. Um, I do get questions when I teach this as a um, as a class and I'm going to be on the road a lot this year and I'm going to tell you exactly where and when I'm going places so that if you are locals you can come and join in but the questions that I get are oh, oh I'm not sure I'd want to see the back of um, you know the you can see the little bit of pink coming through the back absolutely so that is tension based and you would normally have a more matching now i'm just going to come through um you would normally have a much more um matching and coordinating color both front and back so you can use cotton thread for this you can use um through so you can use cotton thread you can use um, embroidery thread multi-tonal whatever you want it really is up to you so what are we thinking I'm loving the way that is turning out um, I will of course be redoing this on Thursday evening and I'll get hopefully the other half of the um, of my panel finished um, but this is such a great technique and a great way to add to your projects so some of the things that we're going to do in this um, technique of the month next month we're going to look at linking and locking designs so those quilting designs that have and you can see here oops um, a real V in it 
as you get started. I'm also going to do sashing um, as, a, as a technique, how to just add it between those embroidered blocks um, and any other techniques that you like the look of hearing about or seeing please do let me know because I would love to be able to include them I am going to do quilting on clothing um, which I think will be an interesting one so there's lots and lots of things as we go along um, so a couple of things that I would wanted to show you that I'd been working on um, you may have seen um, I'm doing vinyl projects to show just how much you can get out of a sheet of vinyl so I did my pencil case I've got the taco case that we're going to do later on this year a little coin purse my straw holder and my drink bottle not only have I done those but I've done the coffee cup carrier and I still have more than half of the roll of vinyl left so I've got to go and create some more projects so that I can show exactly how much you can get out of that next week um, we are going to start our blocks of the month so this is the lovely quilt and I'm doing mine in um, I've got the the sample which is done in these beautiful pale colors and it's just so elegant and gorgeous and I wanted to show the difference and that you can do candle wicking in really striking colors so I am doing mine in these fluoro colors which are from the Fabulux range um, so we're going to start with candle wicking next week um, and if you go into locked in stitches and look at the events you will see each block um, in there that you can join up and when you join up it then gives you a reminder so Facebook sends me a reminder to tell me to come and teach the class it'll send you a reminder to come and join in the class if you select that you are going to an event um, and we've got lots of other stuff coming up as well this year um, I love finding out what you guys are interested in learning so please do let me know one of the things that I do have to do this year just because of traveling etc is some and hopefully most of the classes are going to be live live where I can sit here and see messages popping up and be able to respond to them in real time others such as while I'm on the cruise I'm going to have to preset um, and answer questions as we go along just because I'm not sure on audio capabilities and things like that um, okay Lynette thank you so much for that um, and um, oh absolutely so I can see some messages there let me just have a quick look so Caitlin's uh, she's got a table runner Christmas table runner to do that's always a good one um, and look at the end of the day even if we stuff something up you know we, we are our own worst um, critics um, but absolutely if you have a group of stitching friends um, and would like me to come and teach a class um, please let me know so that I can try and book it in fundamentally we've decided um, hubby and I have decided the best way to keep our um, wonderful 20 years of marriage together um, is for um, for me to travel more please take that as the joke it is my marriage is absolutely fine my husband is wonderful <laughs> um, but it's we're at a great time in life where our children are getting older and able to self-manage so we're doing lots and lots of stuff um, Doris I will absolutely pop a link to the block of the month let me do that now any other questions that you might have guys um, and let me 
that should take you right through um, so um, and yeah look quilting really is easy Lynette I'm so grateful for you um, for you for writing that that's lovely um, but yeah you know even just get a bit of um, of old sheeting or something you know short sheet the husband's bed whatever um, he won't notice um, and have a go at it because it is such a great technique um, and Deb Scott thank you very much more info on the quilt basting gun absolutely let me just grab it so this is our gun and yeah it is exactly the same as the one that you would use for tagging now this is a just a piece of denim fabric that I've actually been playing with a hat design for but I'll show you exactly what you do so you pierce through and there is a YouTube video on this one and all you do is it clicks through and it holds those layers together and then I'm going to come through and I can see that I appear to be frozen in some way there let me just make sure that's coming back um, uh, okay so um, so yes the court basting gun and I'll pop up a link to it as well um, now if you've never seen website this is my website as you can see I didn't put up what this week's class was going to be because I suck um, and I'm going to go into tools for stitches and we've got lots and lots of cool things don't believe it when it says only two left there's more than that I've just got to obviously update and I'm just looking for my basting guns here So that's the Incredi tape that we wrap around and then we've got the basting gun kit and that can go there. Okay, so um, okay so Vicky's asking um, when you're done quilting do you take out the basting gun bits absolutely and if you have a um, I either use an old pair of curvy scissors or if you've got a um, pair of toenail clippers for your pet weirdly enough um, they will take them out perfectly because they sit flat but generally just curved um, an old pair of my squizzes is great for that sort of something that really has had its day um, and I sit outside so that when I shake them out because I'm only going to clip them from one side and then when I shake everything out um, they um, they go onto the deck to be swept up rather than on the floor um, okay let's see and uh, Elizabeth saying thanks for doing the session would love to see how we handle a design that doesn't fit the quilt sizes nicely most definitely so next month when we do um, when we do this one here this design ends up I'm just looking for my start point so this one ends up going way off reservation here and I'm going to have show you how I handle going off the other side as well so we will be doing both of um, both of those things next month and it's one of those things that I want to start you off slowly and get you into the rhythm um, and then we're going to add to it and add to it and add to it so I hope that has been of interest to you um, thank you so much for joining in I have had a fantastic morning 
um, please do feel free to ask any questions as you go along um, I've been so flattered we've got um, I think we're 20 members or 17 members off um, a new milestone for membership and so when we hit 4,000 members um, I will be releasing a new freebie design as well so if you've got any stitching friends get them to join up come come in and have some fun um, and other than that so if you do have other questions that you want answered live we will be redoing this class on Thursday evening again um, at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time um, until then have a stitching day guys and I'll see you later Bye.